You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series, and my name's Andrew Mackay-Smith. The interview subject you've tuned in to listen to is Brett Scallions from the US outfit, Fuel. The reason for the conversation is to promote their December 2017 Tour of Australia. So let's have a listen to what Brett has to say. Here we go. I love it when bands tour on the back of successful albums, giving fans old and new exactly what they want. Sunburn is an epic album, and it spawned many hit singles. The album is even a soundtrack to my life, as, I, as it, no doubt it was to so many others through 1998 and 1999. So what inspired the, the desire to tour on the back of the album again 20 years after it was released? Ah, you know, it's a celebration of uh, of a successful album. That's that's all it is, really, for me. You know, I it's you know, uh, there's there's so many artists out there who would uh, who would die to have you know a hit song, a hit song, much less a hit album. You know, so I'm I'm so fortunate to have that, and uh, you know, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of uh, of a successful album like that is nothing but uh, pure pure happiness for me so i'm excited about it so i play in cover bands and i have done for many years and i've played shimmer nowhere near as many times as you've probably played it but rather a lot it gets a great response and i've put the same question to john humphrey from the nixons about their track sister because the same things happened there with that song but are you aware of the cultural Mm -hmm. impact that the track shimmer has had you know, it's <clears throat> it was one of those songs that just really connected um, with, with so many people. You know, that's a sign of a good song and the sign of a good recording. And uh, uh, um, you know, I've it's there's been times to where I've walked in clubs and and seen cover bands playing it, and you know, it's always it's always such a wonderful thing to see. You know, I, I love to to hear other people's take on the song and. And or, or whether they're trying to play it exactly the way it was recorded, or trying to spin it into their own creation, it's it's just a beautiful thing to to see um, uh, <clears throat> how people like to pay homage to the to the music. You know, I, I've done that so many times with other with artists as well. You know, I love playing uh, other people's music from time to time as well. And and you know, <clears throat> you find those songs that you can really connect to, and when you can get out and play them, it's it's so much fun. So. Yeah, I love playing it, mate. The uh, the bass line in particular, I, I, you mentioned something pretty interesting there. Um, I tend to play a different bass line, not every night that I play it, but I, I try to mix it up a little bit because there's so much harmonic variation going on in the song and the guitar sort of just does its thing. And being on the bass, I can mm-hmm. sort of, I don't know, what do you call it, riff and roll over the, um, you know, right. I'm going to do the humming bit here now. Sorry, I don't mean to do it like this, but, you know, do, 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 you know, that bit there. I love doing that right, bit right. in different harmonic variations on, on the on the bass, whether it be low, lower down toward low E or a bit higher mm-hmm. up in the uh, mm-hmm. E, E in the second position. You know, it's, um, yeah, I just enjoy playing it. And it's never been failed to, I'm never failed to be amazed by the response it gets from fans young and old. Now, what I mean by that is, is uh, say an uh, eighteen or a nineteen year old uh, young lass or lad, will uh, it, they almost have the same response to it as somebody of my vintage who grew up with the song? Oh, you gotta love that the new generation uh, connecting with uh, the music that's been around for <laughs> sometimes longer than they've been around. You know, you gotta love that. Uh, I think with uh, in, in live though, in the live atmosphere, you know, music you can go in and you can really put uh, the songs under. When you're recording the the albums, you can put the music under a microscope and really analyze it and, mm. and focus on trying to pick the the right parts, you know, uh, for the recording. But from, I've always thought live live is meant for embellishment. Yeah, live, great. Is, live is meant live is meant to go out and jam and play and have fun and 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 find search for different ways to do things, you know. Mm. Um, and I, I learned that, you know, you got to stick to the basic grid of what the song is about because you don't want to go too crazy. Um, but at the same time, it's it's fun to, to search for new ways to do things uh, sometimes. Yeah. It it breaks it up for, for me as the player who's, you know, who plays it every night of his life nearly. And, and, mm. and it's fun for the listener, too, to be able to pick out the... Hey, he played that a little different that time, you know, and things like that. So it's it's just fun. It's fun for everyone, I think. Cool, mate. And 
The current fuel lineup includes no members of the band that recorded the ill-fated album from 2008, Angels and Devils. Do you, ever, do you ever get asked to perform tracks from that album and have you ever had to do things like sign the album as a fan thought that you were on the recording? Uh, I've never been asked to play anything off that. I don't, not that I recall. I don't know that I would hmm. if, if I was asked to. It's just not a part of me. Um, so uh, I don't feel like uh, it's it's right for me to perform any of those songs. But hmm. uh um, and I, I don't, uh, maybe I've, maybe in passing, I've been asked to, to sign them, the, the albums or anything like that, but I don't recall. So, <clears throat> that, you know, I'm sure that, uh, the guy who sang that record, I'm sure he had to sign lots of albums that I, I bet he uh, did. <laughs> them, so. yeah, yeah. I remember, um, many years ago when Al Petrelli joined Megadeth, um, and meeting Dave Mustaine for the first time. Um, you know, I was in, in, at an in-store appearance, so I wasn't meeting them for any other reason. But um, I remember, you know, Al Petrelli sitting there next to Dave. Do you just not give Al Petrelli the rest of the Megadeth records that you've got for him to sign? You know what I mean? Or do you um, do you just sort of go, no, Al, you just signed The World Needs a Hero and Dave's going to sign the rest. I let him sign everything as it was. But, yeah, it's a pretty interesting position to be in, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I... I I played with uh, Ray Manzarek and Robbie Krieger of the Doors for a number Did of indeed. years. Indeed, yes, and yeah, you know, so there were there were times that we would do signings and things like that, and 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 you know, fans would come up with Doors albums, and uh, I I remember <laughs> I remember one day looking at Ray and going, Ray, I don't feel right about doing this, and he goes, <laughs> ah, just sign the fucking record. <laughs> So I'm like, I'm like, all right, no problem. I'll sign it. It's like I don't feel right doing it, but I'll do it. Since you said, since you told me to do it, I'll do it. So. Yeah, actually, you just you, you just read my last question. You must have read uh, my mind on this one here. So you did release an album called Puppet Strings in 2014, which featured Robbie uh, from the Doors. Can you mm-hmm. talk a little bit bit mm-hmm. about your collaboration with Robbie and indeed Ray? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I was making, I was writing that record, the, the puppet strings record and, you know, the song, the, the one song in particular came up and, and, uh, and we kind of wrote, uh, I, I wrote what I envisioned to be the solo part of the, of the rec of the song. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't, and originally I didn't think about asking anyone to participate in, uh, in the album at all. But then when I, when I wrote the, that part and wrote the, that, that song, I just thought to myself, you know, Robbie would sound so amazing in this. So I, I called him up and said, Hey man, can you, can you, can you play on a, on a song for me? So he was like, absolutely. So, uh, we, we, we went over to his studio at his house and, and, and this was the first and only time that I sat down and, and, and recorded, uh, with, uh, with Robbie. And it was just such a blast. He, you know, he, we got to the studio, he already had his little, uh, his Fender twin set up and he was ready to rock. And we just sat there and had a blast letting him play over the song for, you know, a good eight or nine takes. And, you know, it was, it was fun to watch him in the studio environment. I, I, played with him numerous times on stage but sometimes on stage you kind of you can't hear everything and you can't yeah. uh, mm-hmm. totally just focus in on certain things sometimes so it was really nice to sit back and really focus in on him and watch him and, and listen to at what he was doing and and see his and see and hear his take every time because mm-hmm. everything it was always different he never he never like um he never like honed in on certain riffs that he liked and kept playing them. He never did that. If every time that it, that he passed by the song, he just played a completely different solo, yes. which was so cool. And it was, it was really difficult for us to, to try to figure out uh, what to take, you know, what to yeah. actually put into the song <laughs> because there was so much good material. So, yeah. Mate, I could talk to you for at least another hour, but I'd better let you go to your other uh, phone call that's no doubt coming through very soon. So thank you very much for the music that you've made, and, um, mate, I'll be in the audience when you guys tour Australia. So congratulations again on a wonderful career and on the album 
uh, Sunburn and indeed on the track uh, Shimmer. Gosh, I've played that so many times. It's a pleasure. It's actually a privilege to talk to you because, um, as I say, I've played that song many times over many years. So, mate, thank you very much. Thank you so much, man. We'll see you soon, okay? No worries, mate. Okay, gotcha. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series and my name's Andrew Mackay-Smith. The interview subject you just heard from was Brett Scallions from the US outfit Fuel. Thanks so much for listening.